Hey everyone, so recently I did a live stream where I did LinkedIn's JavaScript coding assessment, and I really enjoyed doing that. It was pretty fun to make, so I wanted to do another one, but I, I tried to do triple bytes just a moment ago. I did like 10 questions into it, and I realized that it was a little bit out of the scope of what I wanted to cover in this video, so I stopped doing that one, and I'll probably do it in a future video, but I just wanted to do a JavaScript-specific quiz, so I found one on CoderByte, and that one was actually too simple. I actually completed it in like 20 seconds. So I was like, that's not going to be a very good video. So I'm going to try this one out now. <laughs> so this is W3 schools. It says you can test your JavaScript skills with this quiz. It contains 25 questions. There's no time limit. It's not official, obviously. It's just for fun. And I'm going to go through it. But before I get started, if you're new here, subscribe. I make tons of tutorials. I'm going to be putting out videos consistently moving forward. And also hit the like button while you're down there. It will help me out a lot. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Inside which HTML element do we put the JavaScript? Well, that's going to be the script tag. We always put JavaScript inside of the script tag. If we don't want to write our JavaScript inside of the tag itself, we can link a JavaScript file with the script tag. So that's that. What is the correct JavaScript syntax to change the content of the HTML below? So we would want to get it by ID because we have an ID here for this paragraph tag, the ID is demo. So we would get element by ID and we would grab it by the ID of demo. Using the dot enter HTML property, we can reassign the value to hello world. So the answer is B. Where's the correct place to insert a JavaScript? <laughs> Where is the correct place to insert a JavaScript? That is, who wrote this? All right, well, I'm, I'm not gonna roast it too bad, but that that is not very good. Um, grammar. Anyway, so both the head section and the body section are correct. Yes, you can you can insert JavaScript inside the head or the body. If you do it inside of the head, you're probably going to be loading it asynchronously. If you do it inside the body, it's going to load in the order in which uh, you put it in the template, if that makes sense. It would be easier if you saw it in code, but the answer is A. Assuming that whoever wrote this quiz made the correct answers. I don't know, the wording of that last question has me a little bit concerned, but what is the correct syntax for referring to an external script called xxx.js? Well, the answer would be A, because we would link the JavaScript file by using the source attribute. So A it is. Question five, the external JavaScript file must contain the script tag. That is false the JavaScript file would likely not contain any HTML tags unless we're injecting HTML strings or that sort of thing, but the answer is false. How would you write hello world into an alert box? Well, you would use the alert function that's built into the browsers, and then you would pass a string into that function, and then it would come up with a pop-up with whatever string you passed in. How do you create a function in JavaScript? There's actually a lot of different ways to create functions in JavaScript, but out of these three, only one is correct, and that is A. Now this could be closer if they rewrote it a little bit, but C is wrong in every aspect. So the answer is definitely A. Question eight, how do you call a function named my function? Well, you would just call it like this. You would name the function and then you would put an open and closing curly, open and closing parenthesis to invoke that function provided that it doesn't require any sort of arguments. How to write an if statement in JavaScript. So again, the terminology, the, the grammar here is a little concerning. Hopefully the answers are correct. And also it said it's not timed, but there's a timer. I'm assuming what it means is you don't have to finish it under a certain time, but it's still gonna tell me how soon I finished it, I guess. How to write an if statement in JavaScript. It would be B, <laughs> how to write an if statement for executing some code if I is not equal to five. Again, the wording here, I don't know if this is translated or what, but how to write an if statement for executing some code if I is not equal to five. Well, we would write it like this. If I does not equal five, but I would actually say that I would prefer to have two equal signs here so that it's exclamation point equals equals because of this, you're not doing a, a, a literal comparison. So the string five and the number five would be equal when using it like this. But if you put two equal signs, it would check to make sure that the types are the same as well. So this is true, but I don't really like the syntax used here. How does a while loop start? Well, it starts just like this. So you would be responsible for within the code block itself, incrementing I. You would not have to worry about that inside of the loop statement itself. So the answer is C. How does a for loop start? So a for loop, you are gonna increment the I. You are responsible for it in the statement itself. And you need to assign a variable, beginning with this. I don't like how they didn't use var const or let, but I'm not gonna complain too much. I is less than or equal to five, and then you have to increment it. So the first one is obviously assigning a variable. The second one is it should continue looping until this is false. 
And then the third one is, what do you want to do at the end of every loop? How can you add a comment in JavaScript? This is a comment in HTML, and this is like, this is just a straight up error. B is gonna give you an error because there's no closing apostrophe or single quote. A is how you write a comment in JavaScript. So that is that. How to insert a comment that has no, wait, that has more than one line. So for that, you can use this. You can boot, you can use the uh, forward slash asterisk and then all the code you write in between the closing version of that, which is right here, will be a comment. What is the correct way to write a JavaScript array? The correct way to write a JavaScript array is like this. And anything in between the two square brackets, as long as they are the proper data types and not containing syntax errors, will be added to the array. How do you round the number 7.25 to the nearest integer? You would want to do math.round. So none of these other ones exist. So that's why C is the correct answer. It's math.round, RND does not exist. None of that exists. <laughs> so it'd be C. How do you find the number with the highest value of X and Y? You would use math.ceiling, no, no. Math.ceiling rounds up. So say math.ceiling 1.1 would round to two because it goes up. Math.max is what we want, I believe, right? That exists, right? Wait, ooh. I think, I think it's math.max. We're gonna go with that. What is the correct JavaScript syntax for opening a new window called W2? Well, window.open would open a new window. I've never assigned it to a variable before. It's interesting. Actually, I have, I take that back. I don't think window.new is a thing. So we're gonna go with W2. I mean, we're gonna go with uh, A. Question 19, JavaScript is the same as Java, false. <laughs> How can you detect the client's browser name? Ooh, okay. That one, I'm, mm, this one is tripping me up right now. For some reason, I can't remember off the top of my head. If, ooh, I don't know. It might be navigator.appname, maybe. Could also, I, you know, I don't know. I don't think it's C, that doesn't seem to, I feel like intuitively it would make sense for the web browser to give you a an object called browser, and then you could access a property called name on that. Intuitively, that seems like the way, but it could also be navigator because maybe you're not using a browser for the website. Maybe you're inside of an app or an iframe. So it could technically be that. Ooh, I can't believe I'm confused on this one. Like, I, I feel like I should just know this. I feel like it's A intuitively, but I'm going to go with B. Which event occurs when the user clicks on an HTML element? Well, that'd be on click. Well, technically, if we want to get technical, <laughs> on mouse over also happens. Well, it happens before the on click because you mouse over it, mouse over event happens and then on click. So if we want to get super technical, it could be both of those, but on click is the answer. How do you declare a JavaScript variable? I mean, let's just be honest here. If I got this one wrong, I shouldn't be teaching you tutorials. Which operator is used to assign a variable to a variable? That would be the equal sign. What will the following code return? Boolean 10. What? What is this? Seriously, I, 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 right now, I'm gonna go to my code editor right now and I'm going to type that in. I've never used this before. I am sorry, everybody, if I failed you as an instructor, but I've never used this before. You know, before I do this, because I don't want to be called a cheater or anything like that, I'm going to answer it, but I'm super curious. So I'm going to go ahead and say that in a moment, I feel like it's going to return true, but I didn't even know that this existed. I didn't know you could pass in a Boolean to the Boolean constructor. I, It's not going to be not a number. Like I, I, I couldn't imagine that being what happens. So I feel like it's going to return true. So I'm going to say it's re it returns true, even if I'm wrong, but I just need to see this because I've never done this before. I've never seen this syntax in my life. Let's log this, console.log that, and save it and run it. Let's see what happens. It returns true, okay. So, I mean, I just don't, I don't see the point in doing that because you could just get rid of this constructor entirely and save it and then run it, it's gonna still be true. But maybe, maybe doing it that way offers some sort of benefit, like maybe there's some sort of, um, I mean, I, I really don't know why anybody would do that, but let me know in the comments if there's a good reason to do that, but I'm gonna feel good about clicking next now. And Java, is JavaScript case sensitive? Yes, it is case sensitive. All right, so that was the final question. Let's see what my score is. 
according to this, I got 100% of them correct, even though I did guess on, I think, two of them. Well, I don't really need to check my answers because I got them all right. Well, that was pretty cool. Um, I was hoping the questions would be a little bit more serious and a little bit more hard. But, you know, it is what it is. I hope this video was at least a little bit entertaining. Maybe you even learned something. You know, maybe you learned that I don't know how to find the name of a browser, but at least I guessed correctly. Yeah, so if you liked this video, please let me know by actually liking the video down below and subscribe if you're new here, because again, I do tons of tutorials. I put out tons of educational content and I'll see you all in the next video.